what we find uh, was that we looked at a couple of things, contemporary planning theory, conflict resolution, and public art. Uh, they all converge on an idea of engagement and seeing difficult contexts as containing the resources to solve their own problems. You don't need outsiders, you don't need loads of money, you don't need anything. You can actually deal with what you have. If you can build, find the value in, in what you have and build on that, then you build a kind of sustainable future. And we thought that was really interesting, so we looked at lots of ways of engaging with people. And uh, we used public art, art workshops, um, which range from, range from poetry workshops, video sessions, uh, using aerial maps and having children paint and draw and so on. And Jenny ran those and uh, had to move through interpreting. I don't know if you want to say anything about workshops. No? No? Okay. <laughs> Community workshops are a lot of fun. It's all a bit. You think it's going to be stressful, and you think it's going to be hard work. And the hardest work is actually getting people to come along um, to them. But we had we used some art facilitators up in there, so some local artists who worked with the communities before, which was really useful because they'd already built up a relationship with the people. Um, but actually, it became more like fun than anything because it was so engaging to see how people. I mean, these maps are amazing for people to understand their area. It's not like a drawn map. It's like something that they can really, truly engage with. Um, so, I mean, there was a huge, vast amount of information that came from those, and then we interpreted them. And then we interpreted them and, and um, did some intervention work um, to broaden the scope of what was to told to us during the generative workshop. I mean, I suppose I should say that uh, at the start of this, whenever we talked about the, the, the art workshops were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the art workshops were, were brilliant and uh, <laughs> were brilliant in getting past gatekeeper positions, you know, the loudest voice that always dominates. And I went to so many meetings at the start which were just shouting matches for an hour and a half. And people were using themselves as uh, human shields between me and the audience, really. Uh, not through any threat to me, but just because people were arguing so much. Um, and the art workshops just fuse all of that, and you start to talk about lots of different things, like whether it should be amusements, whether you need trees, whether there's too much pollution. I think, I mean, the question, we asked four questions. We asked, what do you value? Um, what would you most like to change? How would you change it? And what don't you like about your area? So it was four questions to everybody who came and did workshops. They were really simple, but by starting with what do you value, it allowed people to see what was really important to them, as well as what are the things that you see these problems with. Um, as, as well as doing our workshops, we're doing interviews with developers, and, uh, council, uh, regeneration officers, and so on. And probably the thing, a lot of this is, you know, nothing's, nothing's ever new, but uh, one of the things that we maybe have done um, is to propose a way of taking all the fine, everything you find from those workshops and charting them against uh, audit commission indicators, the very profiles they're called, um, which break down the, the well-being of a community into things like economic well-being, community cohesion and these sorts of things, and find out from, from this where people's interests lie. So, uh, and probably reading that, you get a sense of environment being, being important within a community, um, and community cohesion being important to those, whereas you talk to the developers and you tr go through transcripts of interviews, it tends to be about money, really. Um, and maybe a wee bit about parking and tra transport and access and things like that. So, whenever you chart that out, you start to get a different sense of how an area might build. Normally, these areas are judged, communities are judged on things called measures of deprivation, which are really, it's like measuring somebody by what they don't have. Um, so, you know, depending on uh, education levels, economic levels and so on. These areas come out as very, uh, some of the worst performing in the UK. When you do satisfaction surveys, people are 90 in the 90% satisfied with where they live. Which is this huge discrepancy between how decision makers see it use uh, information to make decisions and how communities actually see themselves and I think this maybe starts to bridge some of those problems. 
from that we then moved into interventions, which was a really good fun bit, where we made things in spaces, which worked out, uh, or we seemed to be bringing up this idea of car parking, seemed to come up a lot uh, in different ways in different communities. And so one of the interventions we did was we took car parking in the, the fountain estates and grassed over it. And uh, some kids were waiting to go to a football pit match on the other side of the river, and they came on the train on the moment, just as a sort of as a mess about, but totally accepting the whole process. And actually, it, it was the youth uh, club in the fountain who did all the work, we made a shop, uh, community shop, and so on, put those into spaces, lit dark spaces, and so on. Very simple things. But we're, as I said, the, the, the fact that we were there, the fact that people come up and engage with you when you're doing it, is really positive. And I have to say, I've done work as an architect in that area. I've, ne I've never had to talk to anybody, ever. You just go along, you, you walk around the area, you get your area photographs, and off you go. And if you talk to people, it becomes really confusing. So this was a completely different uh, experience. So out of all of that, um, as I say, we, the other thing we did was look for precedent. We've, in this uh, sort of fairly hefty report, we've, we've got ways of financing this as well through the social economy, uh, linking the social economy to urban renewal. It's basically kind of profit sharing or not for profit organisations linked and, uh, to this whole process. So we think that we have a model uh, which is adop uh, adaptable. And uh, we think that we've reached the point where we have recommend specific recommendations in this area, which could be taken into an urban plan, which is a kind of community-based plan, uh, but it accepts and takes on board good ideas from statutory bodies from private developers and so on, and just allows that framework for, uh, we've called it co-influence, where you might have a spine of uh, common, common interests and build your cities around that. So we have this sort of fairly hefty report, uh, which is downloadable on the website, and anybody wants to use up all their own cartridges. And uh, we have uh, posters, which we've got lots of at the back there, which have the website and some workshops. One side kind of gives a summary of the process, and one side uh, gives, uh, so one side gives the kind of theory behind it, and the other side is the fun, is the, is the, is the workshops. And so on. So feel free to take those if you want. And uh, we'll have a small summary document coming out as well. So I think that's probably it. Maybe, maybe just say uh, the last thing is just the, we, we also identified a number of kind of step changes, things that we think could, could really move development towards uh, more sustainable futures, more uh, sustainable community uh, futures. And uh, this move, this, this way that you see communities is a big thing. That we need, I think we need to move away from seeing communities by what they don't have. Uh, restructuring the whole um, statutory sector, the DSD and Department of uh, Enterprise, Trade and Industry, merge, and you can link urban and new social issues. And then ed education of architects and creative people. I think we are very aware in the, in the Art College that we've Architects design in studios, and we're actually up five floors up and looking down, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to get down on the ground and go out and make things and do things outside. And I think you get a completely different sense of value, uh, and you can look, maybe shift our values to be more aligned to uh, more sustainable futures. I think.